got him. That's a big fish. It's heavy. I started a Buford SC Fishing Facebook group. I'll be writing exclusive same day fishing reports. I'll be sharing all kinds of information and you can go on there. You can write your own fishing reports and ask questions or answer questions. So if you want to join, uh, go down in the description and you'll find the link to join that. Today I'm going to show you how to catch sheep's head. I'm going to show the gear I'm using, the bait I'm using, what type of structure I'm fishing. I'm going to talk about the current, uh, the tide, the water depth, all of those things and probably more all throughout this video. So I hope you're paying attention. If you enjoy this video or find it useful in any way, please don't forget to leave a like on the video. That really helps me out. And if you're new to this channel, please subscribe. There's almost 200 other fishing videos on my channel. I offer a kayak fishing guide service where I'll show you where I fish and how I catch the fish. So if you are interested in that, go ahead and send me an email for details. My email will be on the screen now and it'll also be in the description of this video. An important tip I have is if you're not getting bites, keep moving. Don't, don't just sit in one spot and just wait for them to show up. It's better to look for them because most of the time if they're there or they're gonna be there, they're there right away and they're just biting instantly. Okay, so let's talk about the setup and bait. This is a 3,000 size spinning reel, spooled with 20 pound braid. And this rod is made by the company Toadfish. It's 5 feet 11 inches, medium, extra fast. It's specifically designed for sheep's head. It's called the Convict, made by Toadfish. And then tied with a double uni or uni to uni knot. I have 20 pound fluorocarbon leader. Uh, I'll show you exactly what kind it is. I have the thing right here. 20 pound cigar, red label. Uh, and I have about three foot of that tied on. And on that is a sheep sticker jig. It's just like, it's a strong weighted hook. This is a 3 8 ounce. And I choose my weight based on water depth and current. And then on that, I have a fiddler crab hooked. This is exactly how I hook them. Through the bottom, out through the top of the shell. Make sure it's tight and the hook is exposed. Those are some really important parts about it. And if you want to buy any of the gear I just mentioned, it'll all be linked down in the description of this video. So go check that out. So let's say there's a certain spot that you want to get a bait down for a little while and keep fishing it. An important thing you're going to really need, and I this especially applies for people that are only paddling their kayaks, they don't have foot pedals, is a rope. And you can just like take your rope and wrap it around the dock or whatever piece of structure you're fishing and just use it as like an anchor way better than throwing like a normal anchor down okay so here's something really important we just located a sheep's head I mean he completely tore that up you know there's no doubt that it's a sheep's head all right so I want to drop another bait as fast as I can down there in the exact same spot where I had that bite that's like a really important thing now you have to be ready to set the hook And you will miss a lot. See? Lost another bait. I mean, that means he's down there. Alright, here we go. Same spot. Now, if you were paddling, this would be a good time to anchor up by tying off to something. But I'm just going to hold myself in place with my pedals. A lot of the times... Uh, once you feel the bite, it's just, it's already too late. Because they've already stolen the bait off the hook. 
that's something that people used to tell me and something I learned from being out here because it really is true and here is a great example of why I bring one short rod so I can get up under these docks this is great to do in the middle of a summer day when the sun is out it's a lot cooler just sitting under a dock and the fish are going to be here too so another important thing is like how deep you're putting your bait and where you're putting it so i mean you can see how close i get to the dock i mean you just want to have it right up against the piling as far as how deep is i'm dropping it straight to the bottom and then just reeling it up a little bit so there's no slack so i'm fishing on or very close to the bottom for a sheep's head you really need a lot of fiddler crabs probably more than you would think that's what will last me all day and i could possibly go through all these today so here's another really important tip which i'm going to be sharing all throughout this video but this one is really important when it comes to actually catching one of these fish uh, your drag needs to be really tight like I wouldn't lock it all the way down But you need to be able to set the hook right away Hard And then you also have to be able to pull them off that structure so they don't wrap around it So you need tight drag It's super important So if you're enjoying this video so far, please don't forget to leave a like and a comment down below All right We do have our first sheep set and this is a nice one. I mean, he's fighting in the current. Alright, no, it's not a nice one. But it's our first one. A uh, good thing to have is a net. I do have one. It's just I didn't want to net this small of a fish. 13 incher. He's an inch short of keeper size first sheep set of the day just a little 13 incher but we're gonna get some bigger ones for sure so in this situation I'm using the current to my advantage by casting up current and letting the current uh, pull my bait like onto the piling basically right next to it a small one on definitely was small I didn't feel hardly any weight but they're there there we go small one. Oh no you don't like to see that that was one of those puffer fish there we go that's not a puffer fish Ooh, the bigger one. He's gonna be a keeper, I bet. Look at that. Let's use this net. Looks like our first keeper of the day. Okay, I'm doing a bad job at netting them, that's for sure. not keeping fish but this would be our official keeper i think let's see yep he's a 15 incher they gotta be 14. good hook set though got them right in the lip if you haven't seen these fish teeth let me give you a close-up this is really crazy looking fish. There we go, first keeper of the day, a little 15 incher. Second fish of the day. Oh, we got a little one. Third fish of the day though. Same thing, I'm, the current's going that way, so I'm 
casting like here, letting it float to the piling. That's the smallest one of the day, probably 10 inches, whatever. We'll get some more for sure. The reason why I like to fish the pilings that are like grouped up together is because there's like more of a break in the current by them because they cover more area. I don't know if I'm explaining that very well. So at least let me try to show it. Like right here, there's less current than on these sides right here. In between here, there's less current. The fish like to sit there. It's that simple. So I'm gonna talk about tides. Tides are extremely important, especially when you're around here where we have you know, six to like nine foot tides, just depending on the day. Uh, for sheep's head, or pretty much any type of fish that I fish around here, like redfish, trout, and flounder, I prefer lower tides. So the fact that the water is in the grass right now means I still want more water to come out before, you know, I have a lot of confidence in catching fish because the lower water is gonna be better less water same amount of fish so the fish are concentrated that's the way i look at it also the tide related thing is when the water is up in the grass a lot of fish not all of them but a lot of them like to go up to the grass and start feeding in the grass or near the grass so a lot of those sheep said will not stay on the docks and they'll go up in the grass so to sum it up i prefer the lower ends of the tides when I'm targeting sheep's head. I have an outgoing tide now, but it's just a little bit too high, but it's outgoing, so it's gonna get better and better as the day goes on. And don't get me wrong, you can absolutely catch them on higher tides. And obviously it's gonna be very dependent on the spot that you fish. However, my experience has been that when you are fishing the docks, you want lower water. You want docks that hold water at low tide. So let me list all the good things about sheephead fishing. Let's start off with the fact that you can pretty much find any stretch of like docks or whatever. So you can launch at a ramp and go to the nearest like stretch of docks and you can go find sheep's head at at least one of those docks. I mean, they're all around. So if there's an area where there's a lot of docks, go go fish it uh, they're fun to catch they're challenging to catch they fight hard and I mean they're really good fish to keep they're they taste good not only do they taste good but you can keep like 10 per person here in South Carolina and they get pretty big I mean they get really big in some cases so if you haven't done it yet you really got to go do some sheep's head fishing Not a giant. I'd say he's probably close to keeper though. I mean, you'll know when they're there because you'll be missing bites and losing crabs. And you're just slowly kind of get better at getting the hook in them. Pretty fat one. Uh, yeah, he's he's 14, I'd say. Ow! Have to, you have to really watch out for their spikes too. They have some serious spikes right there. Look at that. You can really get stabbed. Ah, he's 13 and a half, slightly under keeper. We got another one right away. Turn the camera off, but uh, he bit as soon as I dropped another bait. Another like borderline keeper, I'd say. Uh, yeah, boy, he's borderline. 
Oh, look at that. He's barely hooked. Hooked in the, like, top of the head almost. Not Almost not even in the mouth. Oh, yeah. He's probably... He's going to keep... Not that I'm keeping him, but... I just like to measure him just to get an idea. Yeah, 14 and a half. 14 and a half inch sheep's head. That's the second keeper size of the day. Maybe the fourth fish of the day, I think, too. Okay, here we go again. Same spot. I mean, usually that's how it goes. Is you can find the spot where you can consistently catch them for a while. The bite. Small one. No need to net them. And again, you gotta be careful handling them. Well, that hook came right out. Another one, another small one, one of the smallest of the day. You can just see how over time this leader is getting all frayed up. Smart thing to do would be to change it, but that kind of takes away from the fishing time. Okay, so if you look over there at the grass and the oysters, you see the water is much lower now. There was a fish. Let's drop back down and get him this time. That's a big fish. It's heavy. It could be a red. It's fighting real weird. <sighs> that was a big sheep's head. He just came off the hook. I mean, nothing I can do. I got, I got him. I set the hook on him, and you know he couldn't pull out drag, so he just pulled the hook instead a big fish though for sure I wish I would have at least seen it I'm thinking it was a sheep's head by the way it actually bit though that was I probably just lost my biggest sheep's head he's had another bite yeah I'm thinking I just lost my biggest sheep's head right there Another bite. <sighs> We're gonna land the smaller one, of course. It's not a bad one, though. And that last one is so big, so heavy. This is like a borderline keeper. It's probably like 13 and a half. I'm not gonna measure them.
got them. Probably giant, I don't think. Uh, I can't tell, actually. It feels pretty heavy. No, no. It's a black drum. That's what you can catch while you're sheephead fishing. Because they like the fiddlers. I gotta be like 14 inches to keep, so that one, probably borderline keeper. Got one. And it wasn't even that big. And he still managed to run me into the structure. I gotta get in as fast as possible because I'm trying to avoid a storm. You tell the wind is just all of a sudden out of nowhere started blowing like 20 mile an hour. I'm holding my hat so that it doesn't blow off in the wind. Okay, now that I'm in some calmer waters, let me do a quick recap. So you want to use 20 pound fluorocarbon leader. You want to tighten your drag up. And when you feel the bite, you got to set the hook really hard. And then you also have to pull them off the structure. You got to be prepared to hook into a really big one. And you're not going to land it if if you don't have your drag tight. Fish as close to the structure as possible. Uh, keep moving till you, till you find where they're at. Bring a lot of fiddler crabs if you plan on fishing for them for a long time. You'll run out of crabs a lot faster than you would expect. Uh, that's about all I can think of right now. If you're watching this and you have any sheephead fishing tips or you're, you notice something that I'm doing wrong, which I'm not an expert, or if, if you have any questions, just leave everything down in the comments below. If this video was useful for you at all, please leave a like. And if you're new to this channel, please subscribe. Thank you for watching.